thought you weren't going to tell any more stories. So every St. Patrick's Day, people think of how great it would be to find a rainbow, go to the end of it, and find a pot of gold. But nobody thinks about what would actually happen if you found the gold. And that's what this story is about. It's called Leprechaun. What are you going to do? It's not nice to make fun of a leprechaun. So we see this drunk Irish guy come home to his wife, who's upset that he came home in a limo, but you'd think that he'd be more upset that she didn't go to his mother's funeral. But he's happy because UPS actually delivers all the way out in the boonies of North Dakota, and he shipped a bag of gold to himself that he claims he got from kidnapping a leprechaun. A leprechaun? Can we inject a little bit of reality in here, please? And even though she sees the gold herself, she doesn't believe him and wants him to sober up. She hears a small child, Boy, I can go for a beer right now. And at first, thinks it's her elderly husband, Dan? Dan, is that you? And then realizes it's coming from a suitcase that's way too big for him to hide in. She opens it, and a leprechaun jumps out. Now we're going to play! He asks her where the gold is, but he pushes her down the stairs before she can even answer. I should have told her to watch a step. Dan comes back to the house, somehow sober now, and finds the leprechaun serving tea. And since he was pretending to be her when he asked Dan where the gold was, he might have told him, but he turned the corner before he could respond. Did you hide it somewhere near the house? He holds him at Four Leaf Clover Point and shoots at him, so he runs to the one place without an exit. Don't go in there, don't go in there, don't go in there. He corners him, shoots him, and locks him in a box. Apparently, as long as the clover he put on the box is there, the leprechaun can't get out. Dan tries to set the house on fire, but ends up having a stroke before he can. Little great son of a bitch! So ten years later, this guy and his spoiled L.A. daughter move into the house, and she's not happy about it. There's no swimming pool, there's no shopping malls, there's no cable. Of course, they immediately check out the creepy basement, where she desperately wants to leave until she bumps into the handyman. Great. She changes her mind about staying when he calls her a wimp because she's afraid of bugs. Well, she says she's staying because women have equal rights. Listen, bud. Hey, this is the 90s. Women are treated equal. <laughs> but... I'm pretty sure it's because she's into Nathan. Don't just put the bags back. I'm gonna stay. And he works with this guy Ozzy and his brother Alex because they don't care about child labor laws. Let's just keep this between us. Tori brings Nathan a drink in the creepy basement, knowing full well he's there to paint the outside of the house. But she drops it. <laughs> They're about to open the leprechaun crate, but Ozzy has an accident. He pooped himself? Of course I did. No, he just spilled some paint. After he cleans up and ruins one of their towels, the leprechaun starts singing and Ozzy goes to investigate. He wipes the clover off and the leprechaun busts out covered in cobwebs. Oh God, gross cobwebs. <laughs> well, Ozzy freaks out when the leprechaun asks him where the gold is and tries to shine his shoes. You want to shine, sir? You don't see your face, you don't pay. He tells the others, but they don't believe him. Why not? He's known for telling stories that aren't true. What, what was it last week? It was the UFOs? No, no, it was Bigfoot. So he's a liar? Not exactly. But they go down there to make him feel better, and Nathan arms himself with a stick, despite having a hammer with him. Had a hammer? They end up finding a rat, and it seems that Tori's relieved that it's not a leprechaun. They go outside and see a rainbow, so Ozzy runs off to find the end of it. Apparently, the leprechaun hasn't heard how to find pots of gold. Well, Ozzy and Alex find the bag of gold that Dan hid, and Ozzy eats one. Back at the house, Nathan's teaching Tori how to paint. Uh, I'm afraid that our liability insurance forbids anyone but us handling the tools and equipment. And the leprechaun starts rubbing her leg. Apparently she thinks Nathan is under the truck rubbing her leg. Nathan. Until she gets scratched. Her dad thinks it was a cat and tracks it to a hole in a tree. He stupidly shoves his hand in the hole and gets bitten. So they all take him to the hospital. Like always, I'll take care of it and get him back on the job. But Ozzy and Alex go to the local coin expert and have him examine the gold. He needs to hold onto the coin overnight but the leprechaun can't wait, and Pogo sticks him to death, and then shines his shoes. I raise a family doing this bullshit. The coin expert also has a power wheels in his office, and the leprechaun takes that and heads down the highway. A cop pulls him over and mistakes him for a child. Say, aren't we a little young to be out this late? The leprechaun scratches his face, and then he chases him through the woods, where they play hide and seek until he gets too tired. Is this like Scream where you told me they were playing tag? No, they actually play hide and seek. So you want to play hide and seek, huh? And then he kills the cop and goes back to the house. Once he gets there, he looks for his gold. Fuck you, Lucky Charms. And he's compelled to shine every shoe in the house. They come back to find the shoes, 
and think it might have been a bear that did it. Well, it could have been a bear. Could have been a skunk. Could have. They clean up and figure out sleeping arrangements, even though Tori wants to get a hotel, and I would assume these three have homes. No shit, Sherlock. So they hear a bicycle bell, and Nathan goes to check it out. Well, he gets caught in a bear trap and beats off the leprechaun. Well, he comes back when everyone comes out to check on why Nathan's screaming, and they send the one person no one believes to call for help. The, the leprechaun is attacking. And the small child to get the shotgun. Alex comes back with the gun, and Nathan beats him off again with it. It then runs into a bush, and that's when he opens fire. So they realize that no one's coming to help. So they head to the truck that barely runs instead of the Jeep. Ozzy, this is stupid! Since the child is the only one who knows how to fix the engine, he goes to check it out. Well, it turns out that the leprechaun is eating the wires keeping the car from getting power, but that doesn't stop Tori from using the cigarette lighter to burn him. He runs into the barn and comes back with his modified power wheels. Apparently, on top of being a shoe shine, he's also a mechanic. He rams the truck and flips it over. Help! Help! It's happening! The attack is on! They run inside the house and cut the leprechaun's hand off with the door. They manage to call the cops again with their cell, but the leprechaun intercepts the radio call to the dead officer, because why wouldn't he run back to the cop car to reattach his hand? How do you get both cars back there? The wee people have their magical ways. They wait for help, and Ozzy complains about his ear, while Nathan's like, Dude, I was caught in a bear trap. Then they slip about the gold, which they wanted to save. See, we can go to the hospital and have them operate and fix your brain. You can't fix Ozzy's brain. I know that, but he doesn't. So why did Alex even tell him about the operation? Honestly, I think he just wanted a segue on how people make fun of him. They make fun of me? Not in front of you. Only behind your back. He's not a very nice kid. So they decide to go get the gold out of the well, but I'm not sure why they just don't tell the leprechaun where it is. I mean, he could just go get it. It's not like he hasn't asked. Have you seen a crock of gold lying around? I want to know where me gold is. Is that me gold? Now where's me crock of gold? I think I know what he wants. So Tori gives him the gold, but it's not all there. He comes into the house and not only plays hide and seek, but gets a little handsy with Nathan. Wow, buttony junk. So even though they've discovered that bullets don't hurt him, they keep shooting at him. So Ozzy realizes that he ate the last gold coin that he needs, so his first thought is to let the leprechaun rip it out of him. I did a smart thing. But his friends won't let him do that. He then says that Dan O'Grady might know how to stop him. So they throw shoes away from the jeep that they finally remembered was there, and Tori heads to the retirement home since she's the only one who wouldn't know where it is. She's also the only one who doesn't know who Dan O'Grady is, so the leprechaun's able to play Big Bad Wolf with her. As luck would have it, Dan's body was in the roof of the elevator she gets in. How did you find me? And he has just enough energy to tell her that she needs a four-leaf clover to kill him. She goes back to the house and looks for a clover, but doesn't call the rest of them for help. Well, he shows up and chases her from the well. Why didn't she just push him down into the clover patch? He would have touched at least one. Shut up. It has to be skin contact. Don't you know anything about mythical creatures? Hello? Anyway... He chases her to the road where she sees the cop car. She gets in to find the dead police officer, because of course the leprechaun would drag the body all the way back to the cop car. Well, the guys find them and shoot the leprechaun and go back to look for the clover. Well, after about 30 seconds, Tori gets tired of looking for one and yells that it's impossible. Forget it. We're not going to find it. And then she immediately finds one. You found one. I told you. When the leprechaun goes after Ozzy, she has the opportunity to touch him with the clover, but she doesn't, because I guess she doesn't like Ozzy or something? I don't kill living things. I feel very strongly about that. Alex then takes it and shoots him with his slingshot, but I guess it didn't work because it comes out of the well. So they fill it with gasoline and set the water-filled well on fire. Burn in hell, you little green bastard! The police show up to all the chaos, and these kids have to explain that a police officer died because they wanted to get Ozzy an operation that doesn't exist, and Ozzy was too dumb to take a shit. Damn it, Ozzy! The worst is over. Subscribe to this channel, or I'll bite your ear off. Now that was fun. <laughs> bon voyage.